Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the Unfiltered Pride. If you are watching on YouTube, you will see that we're actually sat near each other, like we like each other, and the only way we would do that is if we've got a banging guest on. <laughs> <laughs> should we tell them who it is? We... Let's, let's let you guess. So Wait, we need clues. Okay. Musical genius. Oh, you're strong. Yeah. You're bigging them up. Cool AF. Yeah, but that's not cool to say oh, cool AF. Not? No. Cool right, I was like, cool not down fuck. with the kids. Cool as fuck. <laughs> uh, he's someone that you've banged on about for ages. I thought you were going to say something else then because I was like, that is not correct. What you do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just very excited to have him on. Roll the intro, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and welcome the Unfiltered Bride podcast. Tips from the top table and beyond. So you know it's going to be juicy. <laughs> Go on, just tell us who it is. So we have joining us, Sack Sensation and owner of 615, Dax. Woo! Woo! Hey girls, how are you? You okay? Or, now we need more about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or also known as the mad, crazy man from Manchester, I think we described I as will take that as the most crazy introduction anybody's ever given me, Good. so we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> Was I uncool for saying cool AF? Is that not cool? It was a little bit oh, uncool. Yeah. I always say I am the uncool. cooler one. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> Full mum vibes. Uh, that's that's my persona, and yours is you think you're way cooler than I am. I'm cool on a night though. No? Okay. <laughs> moving moving swiftly on. So, Dax, for anyone that doesn't know you, give everyone like the spiel. Tell us who you are, what you do, all of that. So my name is Dax. Is that your real name? No. What's your real name? Do you really want to know? I reckon- do you really want to know? It's be like John. <laughs> no, I reckon, I reckon his name's Ben. No. What's his name? What do you It's reckon? really boring. Daniel. Oh, oh, oh no, yeah. I knew that actually. I knew that. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you did you know? Yeah, I did know okay. that. I think one of the girls told me. He's like trying right. to hide his real identity. Because mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I, I think I asked yeah. him where Alter Dax ego. came from. Because I was like, how does that rhyme with sort of Daniel and Sax and Yeah. That, that, I see what you did and, there. And <laughs> it became a thing. Um so my Wait, he said he was not he was cool as well. Now that's now something you don't My do. cool fact is now <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my area. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so my name's Dax. I am a sax player. Thank you for having me on today's podcast. Massive fan. Um, and I own a company called 615. Um, and we produce entertainment concepts for weddings, um, DJ entertainment, live entertainment, bands, and everything really cool. So nice. yeah, nice. that's kind of us. And, and as you said, I'm a sax player myself. Uh, and that's how I started the business 10 years ago. Yeah. So when did you start playing sax? Uh, when I was seven years old. Which how? Is I always, a, we laugh about this, right? In a non-offensive way. Yeah. We always are like, the kids that were like forced into playing the saxophone when they were younger. Were you in band club? Were like not as, <laughs> maybe yeah. not as cool at school, but now they're like, they've overtaken all the cool kids at school. I was that kid. For sure, I was he that was kid. Daniel, he was Daniel. Yeah, he was Daniel. We did band club. Did you have braces? The whole thing. You've got perfect teeth, I bet I you didn't did have, have braces. I didn't have braces. Are your teeth just like that? Mm. No. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are not. Um, but yeah, seven years old. Little um, Daniel. Yeah, little Daniel. Oh, we glasses, have a glasses. Oh, you yeah, 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 yeah. Did you have to get the school bus as well with your big saxophone? Yeah, the lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, big words, oh. And that was it, really. However, it wasn't forced by my parents. It was genuinely a passion mm-hmm. thing. Really? I, yeah, yeah, it was. Who did you hear playing sax then that made you go, "I want to play sax"? Do you know what? I have no idea. Um, but I wanted to just play. A musical instrument and it just everybody did the obvious it was clarinet there was the piano there was the all and sax was always something that you progressed onto okay and i just went so I'll straight start. there you're very lucky that sax got sexy I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> daniel got sexy <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you can see him there on his clarinet doing quite doing, i'll it? take that i'll take that i'll take that um but yeah seven years old and did all the usual bands, grades, all that type of thing. Um, so yeah, like it was a long time ago. Did and you do we, anything else? Yeah, before, what jobs what, have you what had? What jobs have you had? Oh, loads. I did um, Saturday jobs at 
B and Q. Yeah. Hey, that yeah. was always a cool place to work because they paid you more than anyone I else got, did. Listen, I got paid really well out yeah, at yeah. the time. <laughs> Buzzing. I went to university. What, what did, did you do? do? Oh. Law, law degree. Oh. Did you? Yeah. Daniel yeah. was trying to be Big someone else. Daniel was coming Daniel through. was trying to do <laughs> something to totally Dan. different. Yeah. Hated it. Dan, lawyer. Um, completely hated it. And then went and did the degree, got working for a, a legal firm, hated every minute of it, and then just picked my saxophone up again because I didn't play at all yeah. at university. I literally stopped completely. And then the whole Ibiza sax thing started to become a little bit of a thing in Ibiza. And I have always been into my house music and yeah. all that type of thing, probably more about the music than playing the sax. Yeah. Um, and then I just started picking up again and just got a few gigs at the weekend and it kind of... How did you get that first gig though? It was... <laughs> How did I get the first gig? <laughs> All I can imagine is little, little Daniel with his glasses. <laughs> no, yeah. I can imagine Daniel's poor parents. I feel like I was a little a bit cooler. A <laughs> little bit cooler at the age of 21. A little bit. Wait, what then were you known as then? Were you then Dan then? Seven. It progressed into Danny. Dan. Danny. Danny. Yeah, was but it you're, Danny? You're I'm not entirely really sure it was. He's going to be a lawyer. I'm yeah, saying, right? Oh, he's got the saxophone again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll stick with Daniel. We'll stick with Daniel. <laughs> um, so I got the first gig at a little place that I lived. It was a little tiny bar. And there was just a DJ playing. And they just wanted a sax player to kind of... They'd seen a few things online. I said, I'll give it a go. Did it for a beer and a packet of crisps. Nice. Oh, Literally. Yeah. was there for six hours <laughs> all night just working out how to kind of play over the dj sort of stuff and i got it really quick yeah um and then there was a super club in blackpool nice that asked me to play which is called the syndicate which was like the biggest club in the uk at the time they asked me to do a gig was with... that like your breakthrough to you at that point was that like oh my god it was a big at the time, it was a big gig. There were thousands of people in there. Um, I'm shitting myself big yeah, time. <laughs> what were you, what um, was your performance? Because obviously, I've now seen you perform. What was your kind of performance? Had you found yourself no, at that bit? Were you ducks at, at that bit? No, no, no <laughs> still not Daniel at all. I think I branded myself <laughs> Daniel Scott because that's my middle name okay, at the time. So I was yeah. going through this whole brand thing that- Crisis. The crisis at the time. <laughs> um, yeah, and then a club booked me. Um, a friend of mine called Danny Howard, Radio One. Yeah. He wasn't on Radio One at the time. We did a few gigs. So sorry. Um, it was fine. <laughs> um, you can say it's fine. Brian's like <laughs> fuming. So yeah, club, gig, went to a thousand people. You working as well at this point? Yeah. So I was working, I actually was working in a bank at the time full time in the week really random like we, try to join the dots here, here. I feel yeah. like the person so, that yeah, we, we, went... we booked for this talk yeah yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah law degree yeah. full time so, bank job you're a job. smart guy then you can say you're a smart guy but you're, you're not just I'd go, yeah I'd take that okay, yeah. I'd take actually that. we went for lunch earlier and I left and I was like he's a very really clever cool. man cool your business like I'll take that business actually, that's frame. the first thing I said but this is how the suppliers that get here are it's not just about the music part of it. You've yeah, got to understand not. the business and the connections and the work. Psychology. Together. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, L degree, job, saxophone at weekends, tumbleweeded, mad, mad busy. Yeah. And then something I had to give. Yeah. Full-time job, disappeared. Uh, met my business partner in Manchester and 6.15 became a thing. So you literally were like, I'm going to quit my job. We're now going to start are we starting a band? Is that what you were starting? Uh, what were we starting? I have no idea what we were starting. Actually, we started it because we just wanted to put parties on. Okay. <laughs> but we wanted control over what the party was. So I think initially, maybe it wasn't, we didn't want to be a planner, but we just wanted control over what the party was. And we so wanted to bring- So they want entertainment and you go, we We wanted to this. bring a club environment to a wedding. So, so when you started with your business partner, you yeah. were like, we're doing weddings. We that are, was specifically yeah. what you are doing. We are doing weddings, yeah. but bringing a cooler edge and a, if you want to categorize it, a clubby feel into the wedding industry, which at the time there was a lot of 
more generic concepts yeah, and yeah. DJs. And we were very far over one side. It was a lot cooler, which yeah. you saw the yeah, other yeah, week. I was going to say, which you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, I was like, can you finish that sentence? I'm I was sorry. like, wow, well, like, we're ready now. We no. started. <laughs> and it was definitely about bringing people from a different world. And by that, talent that worked in club world into a wedding, a wedding industry. Because yeah. we thought there was value for wedding. And by its nature, that was a bit disruptive at the time. Because it is true. Like, if you think about weddings, nobody go, like, you, the people that are getting married go to clubs. Yeah. They go, that's where they get their music and the party yeah. from. So we're trying to then make a party at a wedding, but using all the wedding people yeah. and not the people that we like going out and seeing in a club. Yeah. So we just, we just bridged the two and we were like, that we want to bring that vibe into a wedding and we didn't think we should categorize it a wedding and that's why 615 does the wedding after party we wanted to yeah. brand it our way so it didn't yeah. feel like a typical evening do evening yeah so bash. what so this is 10 years ago so how old are you 36 okay. i should have made you guess that but we had that that's conversation right. earlier how old do you think we are <sighs> <laughs> we hate the age game <laughs> um I'm going to go with... Who do you think is older? <sighs> That's a really bad question. <laughs> That's a really Don't, bad question. Don't, because if it goes the wrong way, it's going to absolutely cause... 30 and 32. Fuck. Which one which? You. Which one which? You don't even know, yeah? 30, 32. <laughs> Have we got it completely wrong? No, mine's a bang on. You got mine. Oh, right, okay. She ain't 30, though. <laughs> Go lower. I'll give you a clue. Go lower. <laughs> He's like 35. Oh dear. 26. 28. See, you just Ooh, really nice, I was you? Not a million miles away. Not a million miles away. It's but, just. But the, it was the wrong. The, it like, was the wrong side. All she wanted to know is that you knew I was older. That's all she cared Yeah, I'm about. happy. To but it, we threw him off because my daughter's downstairs and she's 10. I don't think he played into that consideration. Yeah, that did was, you? you did. Didn't I def- you? So that yeah. didn't come. Yes, it did. That's why oh, he did. Oh, no, it did. <laughs> and you're like, no way you can child that old. Oh, no so way. Oh my gosh. Um, I have a question. Mm. Why 615? Ooh. Really interesting story. My business partner and me, it's his date of birth and my date of birth. Fused together. You... <laughs> You're a very intelligent man, but these things are just like, here you go, D, Dax, Sax. Yeah. I thought it'd be a way cooler reason. But yeah, yeah. It's really not. Who's that. the six? Me. And and I like the fact that you've spelt that one though, and then the fifth, it is cool. Yeah. You're lucky yeah. that it's cool. Do you know what it was? We didn't want a brand that it needed to mean nothing for yeah. it to mean something. Yeah. yeah. So we kept, instead of it being... Sax and know, DJ. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we wanted it to be something that was completely made up, um, you know, I wrote down everything that I knew about Tom and everything that I knew about me. Saw six fifteen, and we just put it together. I do, I do love it. And do you know if you look at the logo, it's actually six fifteen. Stop it. Have you tweaked that? Wait, yet? hold on. You know the semi. You know the three quarter circle. Mm-hmm. If you think about a clock, oh, six, that's so cool. Fifteen. All right, that's clever. <laughs> you've redeemed See, your dad. You you've gone from the, the initial merge yeah. to making yeah. it cool. So okay. cool factors going up. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, You're definitely... A the funniest thing is, he's way cooler than both of us. So. I know, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not entirely him. sure I agree with that. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got now a wedding. You want to do weddings. Yeah. How did you book like the first weddings? Because I feel like suppliers obviously listen to this as well and they're thinking, how do we get into the industry? Where You have no experience to show... We weddings. had no idea yeah. what we were doing. <laughs> we were a couple of sax... Tom's also a sax player, by the way. Okay. So my business partner yeah. is a sax player. We who's, were... Who's better? Oh, we're, we're different. Who's better? Tom. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> I have seen Tom. I haven't seen Tom. Is he, good? Him. is he a different style? Yeah. If it's a Tom, I Doesn't think jump it is. About, I, I jump about... As I say, you're yeah. like a Duracell bunny. Yeah. Like you were... Is that him? That's him. Everything just always looks so, so cool, your doesn't branding, it? Your branding, I know that doesn't seem like it's important, but it's very important. Your branding is like bang on. Yeah. And I think as couples that look at that are like, they're clearly, you clearly put money into it. You clearly put yeah. effort into it. And, and that shows then that you're like a legit company. For like, if you look at what the brand's about, it's all about feeling. So when we 
to delivery of the event to when you go on the social media, we want you to know it's us. Yeah. And I, we've worked really hard at that kind of brand identity thing from a, when you land on a 615 post, you, you know should know yeah. that was always the kind of thought process with it. I think that's important though, because I'd look at, I'd look at the brand and be like, yeah, they're cool. Yeah, I they, agree. They, 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 You'll give yeah. For cool. me, I'd be like, because you can only experience you guys when you see you guys. Yeah. You can see the videos, you can see that. But I think the brand massively elevates that and matches and the that's energy. And it needs that to make it work because you can't, it's difficult for us to do what you do unless you feel yeah, yeah, yeah. and experience it. And there's a massive difference between the two. You can only get it so far Until looking you, at it yeah. on a video. How um, do you describe your 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 bands because obviously you've got noir as part of the six so six fifteen is a collective of different entertainment concepts what we are known for is the high energy dj sax percussion yeah which has now spawned into different lives so with violins and but it's not it's about the music and everything that goes into making the concept than about the sax player yeah. or it's the whole thing. And to be clear, you're not, so we have talked previously about um, wedding band directories. Yeah. Where you go on and you find a band. Yeah. That, that's not what you're doing, is it? You're no. doing as in you're actually creating all of these, you know we all of these We create the concept. And you put this person in the, group and this person with that yeah. wedding because you're doing XYZ. So we start with a blank piece of paper. Yeah. And that is how Noir was born. He blank piece Noir of paper. So, different so better worse. than you. I remember this from the previous <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Noir. Is that how we're going to say it? Say, Noir. It. Noir. say Noir. it. Noir. Noir. No, he definitely said it different the first time. <sighs> I was no, you see. <laughs> Noir. Noir. Um, but yeah, we, we are creating concepts. Yeah. And we do have a desire as a brand to be different in every single way, shape or form. We know what is out there in the industry and every time we produce something, we are producing the music, we are thinking about the brand look, we are yeah. thinking about what they're wearing, what the show looks like, it's very curated. So when we looked at Manchester, that has been years and years and years of, of production, yeah. and constant creative elevation. It doesn't just happen. I think you said something really key there. You went show. What the yeah. show looks like. It's a show. Yeah. It's definitely a show. And I've having now seen you, I totally agree. And people like I feel, feel like that part of the wedding. I even say it to my couples when I leave. I leave after the first dance kind of time, and I'm like, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your night. You're you're done now, guys. You like there's no more formalities for them. They've, I've got no more jobs for them to do. They're done. They should now be able to enjoy the show. Yeah. They're no longer the show in a nice way. They're still the most important people in the room and blah, blah, yeah. blah. But it's so much nicer to go, that's your job now. Make yeah. sure everyone has a nice time. And it's interesting because that's when you look at 615 as a disruptor in entertainment, which I think we are just because of the way we do things. Yeah. We do weddings in a different way. We don't follow a normal format. We never did. What um, format do you, what's well, we, different? We, so take the DJ sax percussion concept which we like i said we we are known for we put the entertainment towards the back end of the evening okay a lot later than you would typically do in a normal stereotypical wedding yeah because we want you to cover your formalities first you cut into the cake the first dance we want to leave that sense of what's the word um excitement to yeah come. like are you literally making people stay and wait to see yeah something? we want to that that mystery it's an element yeah. of mystery where people don't know there's something coming but when it comes it's like whoa what was like <laughs> where was that from yeah. and and that's all part of the engineering of yeah, it's the clever evening because that's what you said though we've had i've had discussions with with venues and couples and things all about timings of first dance and stuff. And I get it from a musician and entertainment point of view where you want it as late as possible. For a logistics point of view, I need it earlier because if we're finishing food at six, I can't, the first dance can't be at nine yeah. because what the hell are you doing between that time? But actually you've explained how you can still do first dance earlier, yeah. but then just like hit them with it Bang. later. <laughs> Literally. So for, give me the perfect timings of a wedding for you then, what would you Perfect say? Perfect time. So let's say evening started 7.30. Yep. 
First dance, eight o'clock. Yeah. Straight into the cutting of the cake. Yeah. Bit of dancing. Yeah. Evening so food. So just DJ playing. Yeah, DJ playing. Yeah. And that's kind of our opportunity to cover. We still do the cooler stuff, but 80s, Motown, mm -hmm. disco, still credible music. Yeah. Not necessarily real DJ. super cheese. Yeah, yeah. Um, But covering off that, because you've still got a wide range of people yeah. at a wedding. So do you find that people will still dance to a G DJ? Because yeah. I feel like that's what people worry about, yeah. is they would assume that they need sacks on earlier to pe so people know to stay. I think it comes down to our background is club yeah. talent. And the types of clubs that we've played at in the past, if you're not keeping the dance floor busy, let me tell you, you won't have the gig the following week because you are out, oh, somebody like else is that. in. Yeah. And you've got to know where to take and that is an experience thing. Yeah. So when you're in a, a venue, that venue is measuring by drink spend over a bar. Yeah. Your job as a DJ is to keep people in that venue as long as possible. So the music that you play in is really, really important. Um, so actually we don't struggle with that as much because the talent that we use yeah. is all from that world. Because I think people pitch a wedding DJ as I immediately, you know, in Love Actually, when they're like, oh, worst DJ in history, if they play Puppy Love. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what people worry about. And some people are like, oh, I just want a DJ because I'm not really first on the music. And a lot of people are like, I'll just send them a playlist. It's like, a DJ's a DJ. Like, there's... And there are, but there are some DJs that are like that, where I would be like, make sure you give them a playlist. But I'm guessing there's well, a we budget. Well, do, we, do, we do take, like, prior to any event, we always get the client to think about music they love, but we'll always say we'll play it when it's right and if it's yeah. right. Because if you drop the wrong track at the wrong point and it clears, you've got to work really yeah. hard to bring that back. That's so and it's much a, pressure, I hate. <laughs> but it's a journey as well. Yeah. But if you know where to go, yeah, like Tango that, you know, like yeah. he knows exactly where to move. And to be fair, it was really good at, because I, requested a song I like Waka Waka but I yeah. and he was like yeah yeah didn't just do the thing where it's the next song yeah he waited and then at some point when I then heard it I was like and that on. is that that is experience from a probably a club yeah background because you you're measured by that in yeah. that world so it, we don't really struggle as much with that but you still want the involvement from the client. So what time so if they had an eight o'clock first dance they've started yeah. a DJ from eight o'clock what time are you coming on Half nine, between half Ooh, nine and okay. 10. So we go evening food, yeah. maybe nine o'clock. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Let everybody think that they're going back to a DJ, then bringing them back into it, 9.30, 10 o'clock, all the way through till midnight, half 12. I also feel like that's the point where people will start to dip off. Yeah. And, that, and you did exactly the same at our tour and it's like last trains were happening, X, Y, yeah. Z. And then you were just like, Nope. Nope, you ain't going home. That was always the idea behind it. So when we started doing weddings 10 years ago, we came up with that format because we didn't want people to leave. Yeah, because like didn't at 10 o'clock want... it can die a yeah. death. Yeah, that doesn't happen at a 6.15 oh. wedding. It is up and going, up. It's going somewhere. How, so you've come on at half nine. Yeah. Would you then want to be the last song? Do you think you should be ending with entertainment or do you think it should end no. with a bit of DJ? No, we... Towards the end, probably a little bit of singing hands in the air, yeah. cheese, just yeah, yeah. towards the back end. I, yeah. I think it's important. You bring everybody together in a circle with their arms around each other, family, like everybody. Yeah. I think it's a he nice nailed way. That last song. What was the last song? Oh, it's, it's a who's a band from Manchester? It's a very obvious. Is it Oasis? Yeah. Was it? Don't. It was. It was Wonderwall. something like Was it that. Wonderwall? It might have been Wonderwall, but it might have been. But, it was only afterwards that I thought about it and I was like, oh my God, because he was like, it's what song really do you want important. as a last song? And yeah. I was like, no, 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 you pick. Nailed it, absolutely nailed it. How do you it. feel about one more song? Do you do it? Do you do one more song? <laughs> Depends who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who it is, but yeah, We no. always think if you don't do it, you're mean. Yeah, 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 no, we, we always cry, do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we made them think that we're not gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and then, then we do it, and then we do it. Nice. What about the surprise element? Yeah, which is, which is so important, because the evening part of a wedding, because we've said there's nothing else happening, it really is all about that entertainment. And if there's yeah. not stuff that's like getting them at every and it's bit. Not, we, we, we went for lunch before here and we yeah. were talking about that mystery that, pe like for us, it was always about showing different cards at different times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We feel that if we've done that too quickly, we have nowhere to left. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. You, I think you said earlier, don't show you all your cards at once. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas people yeah. want to, because they're like, 
oh no, it's cool now, but it's like the weight is even better. Because we've kind of talked about this throughout the daytime of a wedding is to do a little bit of the drink reception and a little bit of the cocktail hour and like yeah. the food is having to just slow it down and change the vibe. Because a lot of people want like a really nice romantic drink reception. Like you wouldn't make sense in a super romantic drink Definitely reception not. after a church wedding. It's probably not the right thing. Yeah. But you but... could absolutely go to carnage <laughs> throughout the day. Yeah. Like change the vibe. But you do do daytime music. We do do, do daytime which music. Is cooler than the That's average the point. daytime so music. We, yeah. we curate. So if you look at the daytime acts that we have, we've curated the tracks yeah. that they're playing. So we're very hands-on with what's being played, the look of yeah. what they're wearing. So as you a cons- know to change the vibe yeah. throughout the day Because well. we just don't want to be putting things into the wedding market that we know exists. Or else. you don't believe in. Yeah, yeah. And, and that creativity is so important. So for couples that are like right at the start, because we again, we've talked about this, but you wouldn't be right for every couple just as yeah. all bands aren't right. How do couples know what their style is? Like, I obviously think I'm cooler than I am. Like, what <laughs> What can people, how do they know what they want? Because do you just Google wedding band, wedding sax? Like, what do My, they want? It's a really difficult question. I think a bride and groom should try and speak to maybe a handful of people and look at what we call it a discovery call. Yeah. What does that discovery process look like? If it's transactional, yeah. just so let's say you want a sax player, we'll give you a sax player, but there's no talk about anything else. Yeah. For me, Here's that's transactional. Price, that, yeah. yeah, bang, there's a, there's a home for that. But if you go a step further and you're talking about the music style, what does the journey, what's the experience? Would you do that pre then booking? Yeah, we, we, we can You've got no issues with that? No. So for someone listening right now, yes. how would you describe your like ideal match with a couple, like what type of person are they? So mm. I want somebody listening to be like, actually, no, they're perfect. That's me. That's me. They're talking to me. We <laughs> want people that have got a passion for music. Okay. So if, you know, take, let's talk DJ sax, percussion. We know that's got an affiliation with Ibiza. Yeah. So as part of our call with the client, it's quite personal. We don't just talk about the immediate and often get an understanding of where people go out on nights out, where do they yeah. go on holiday? You can start to find, so it's those contextual details yeah. that allow you to really, you know, even if it's, I don't know, take me when I went to university, I went to clubs and I went to watch a DJ and that would be my thing. And it, it yeah. 615 is a reflection of Your my identity. personality yeah, yeah. in many ways. Um, you know, and for some people it was bands and um, going to watch certain bands like and growing a up with, in the corner that yeah, does the and going yeah. and, and so, so it, I think it's digging deeper. It's good that you said pe- that. Yeah, people look at their weddings and book what they think their wedding to be like. But if you're asking them, no, 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 what are you like? Yeah, that makes that's where the, the magic wedding. starts to happen. Yeah. So it's at six fifteen that happens. Stand as, as standard. That's yeah. we do that with everybody. Um, we don't have conversations about noirs, right? Or this it is a conversation that gets you to that point. Yeah, I have to ask you a question. Mm. So <laughs> it sounds serious. It is quite serious. It sounds actually. really serious. It is serious. So I've got a bride that I'm working with at the moment, and they're based abroad. She asks a lot of questions. So mm. when we're looking at different suppliers, she sends a massive list of questions. I got no issue with it. She wants to know what she's booking. She yeah. wants to know all this information. I've had, oh, I remember this one. I've had two suppliers reply and say, uh, I don't think I'm right for them. They're asking to. And I'm like, how many questions? Too I, many questions? I genuinely believe they think it's a someone trying to find out what they do, who they are. Do you reckon? But yeah. it's coming from me. I know, and these suppliers are suppliers that I know. It's like me sending you and saying, but yeah. I say, look, she's baseball. She's she's lovely. Like ge- I genuinely have no but- My opinion is if you're going to spend... An amount of money. Thank you. You want to know what it is you're bloody getting. Well, because like, she's come back to me and been like, am I doing something wrong? Because like, they're literally saying I don't want to work with her. And I'm like, I genuinely don't think you're doing anything wrong at all. No, and I'm I, like, am I wrong? At the end of the day, it's a, it's an emotional purchase. Yeah. It is not so... Like, it's different if it's transactional. So if it's literally this and this. Yeah. 
price pays and that's it. And yeah. you can do it in 30 seconds. That isn't the type of, but when you're spending thousands, thousands of pounds, yeah. that is an emotional pr- purchase that needs consideration. Yeah. We don't do mass numbers of weddings yeah. because the service part of it is really important. So actually dedicating that team to that client, all of the probably 70% of the work is done before the wedding takes yeah. place. Mm-hmm. Not when we turn up. I literally turn yeah. up for two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's when couples are like, we've canceled, can we have a deposit back? They're like, no, I've done all the work. <laughs> yeah, but like that process is crucial. Yeah. But it's, we were saying earlier that when speaking to clients initially, it's it's not a that we have to answer all their questions. We're asking them questions yeah, back. Yeah. And it's like, you have to be vulnerable and show your true self to the client as well. It's, it's a relationship built on trust. Yeah. I think, I don't know if you agree, but for like planners as well, I think it's a, you're interviewing them as much as the yeah. other way around because you've got to be able to turn around and go, you're the expert. And I'm at some point I'm going to say, your idea is crap. Yeah, yeah. this <laughs> won't work. This will yeah. not work. And you need to be in a position where you can have that conversation. And somebody goes, yeah. I've hired mm-hmm. you for that mm-hmm. expertise. I trust you. And I trust you. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't get that right at the beginning, I think it can be a real challenge point. Yeah, for the whole rest of the time. And I think that's why we're really particular about customer service and that discovery call. People know that it's not transactional. Yeah. They know it's deeper because of the detail that we're going into, which also means they can pick up the phone and ask questions at any point yeah. and know that they're going to get response responses quickly within yeah. 24 hours. You know, we can arrange a call. That service piece is huge. It's important. But I that guess is, that, like, that comes with the price mm, of it. Yeah, of course. Like, I don't want to talk figure because it's difficult anyway because it depends what you book. I think. Yeah. But if, if music isn't massively important to you, no problem spend Absolutely. a smaller budget on it have the set have expectations of then how much like involvement you're going to get with it and how much effort is put in on the day no shade whatsoever yeah if you're like you said if music is a passion put your money there put your effort there but it should be responded with by by your musicians and ultimately yeah like, and that's where we're really particular about talent we yeah. have to be for them to work with us as a brand we've got to be really particular yeah Um, because they have to care about what they do for us to care about we you know it's got to be reciprocated all the way around have you done weddings where it's not where the vibe where they shouldn't have booked you yeah yeah what do you how does that feel do you know know what it is we've we've had it we've had it maybe where people like the idea of the cool thing Mm. But they're not cool. But it's not. <laughs> Don't but, look but at actually, me. I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> but it actually isn't necessarily. And we've been through the same process. It yeah. happens very, like, not very often at all. Yeah. But maybe one does go through the net because you know what it's like. Recommendation. Yeah. yeah. People go, you need these guys. We can, and in a way, they can almost be sold regardless of what that discovery call yeah. looks like. They are in booking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and. But you've got to remember every couple is very different. Yeah. And that, you know, it doesn't happen often, but no. it can happen. Oh, it makes me cringe for you. But, like, <laughs> Yeah. I, I had a client the other day actually asked me about you guys. And I was like, I know her. And I was like, they're perfect for you. Yeah. But yeah. if it wasn't, I'd be like. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, again, you can have DJ and sax and it not be your energy. Like there's also some that are a bit more different. And- but yeah, and I think like ours is ours. We think about the music. So like we... For example, the ages, we don't really struggle with ages. You might, that probably sounds a bit bizarre, but we make a lot of the tracks that we play, we'll maybe take a vocal from the eighties and put it over something that's current. So that grandma that's 70 on the dance floor, still singing the song, but the track, she would never listen to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's where you get, it's that creativity and ability to Mm. do that. Yeah that enables you to do that. I think there's so much more to it. Like even just saying that, I think people don't realize that that's what you actually do. And that's, that's what you actually pay for. Yes. Is the expertise of that. Yeah. Instead of just pressing a button, mixing it together essentially. So do you write a different set list for every wedding? Is there no. even a set list? No, we have regular creative catch-ups at the yeah. office where we talk about intro tracks. What is that? So when we did Manchester, yeah. there was a big, intro track before we came out yeah what 
new tracks of maybe trending at the moment that we can maybe slot Add in. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sets go in like waves. Okay. So you'll notice that there's parts of the records where there's got to be loads of space because I need the space to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Excuse me, you wait for me, wait. To, oh, wait for me to play. Okay, okay. Um, so the way those sets are engineered are constantly updated, elevated. Yeah. So a que so it's not a good question for a couple to ask to see a band's set list then? We can, yeah. So Do you what know what, actually, I'm going to bet in here, I'm really sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Your processes are so slick, like, yeah. whenever I speak to you guys for a client or for me or whatever it is, it's like, here, like, the, the communication fire Sorry. first and foremost. Yeah. And, like I hate waiting, I'm not a patient yeah, person. Yeah, Do you know what that was? <laughs> so when, when we set the company up, we looked at external brands. Yeah. Around Sneaky. what? Yeah, yeah. Not, not in music, okay. literally. I like to have a bit of a shop. Yeah. Yeah. So we looked at Selfridges and Harvey Nichols and Harrods and Zara and all these different, and looked at different private. We thought we want to be the Harrods of yeah. mm -hmm. the wedding. And with that wasn't, you could buy some of the same products in all sorts yeah, of different yeah, yeah, yeah. places, mm -hmm. but the experience that came with that purchase in that environment was it. Yeah, And that's where that came from. So client contact, we are always, I check it. Every day, twenty four hours. I bet it's got to be. Like, Why are you so like, sending us ghost emails? <laughs> He's on a podcast. We but it's so off. important because I think yeah. you can. If, you judge if you, quickly. Big time. But it's even so. Like uh, they'll send me something. They'll be like, "We've got this option, this option, this option," and everything. Every single option comes with a link yeah. to yeah. a video of what they're telling me that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how? So couples, they're just engaged. Music's important to them. Yeah. Do you First, think we say? Uh, do you think I say music weird? No, not she at does. All. Wait, say it again. Don't put any effort into it. Music. She says music. Mu music. Like moo, like music. a cat. Music. Music. <laughs> like M E W. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, right, so a couple of engaged there. Yeah. First thing I want to know, my question has several parts to it. Yeah. First part is give me the different styles of music. So if I said I want a band, yeah. what are the different types of bands so that people listening can be like, ah, I'm a. Mumford and Sonsy kind of yeah. duo with a guitar. Like, give me the different types. I would say kind of rustic, um, quite vintagey feel, like a Mumford and Sons, quite exposed. Yeah, um, exposed like that, yeah. You've got luxury kind of sheet where it's a bit more staged. So you've yeah. got, like, if you look at our band, like our bands, we produce those and the music that sits underneath them is very structured slick. Mm -hmm. and curated so got exposed slick yeah i feel like cheesy is an option people like cheesy is definitely an option yeah. and it's a little bit more unplanned it's a little yeah. bit kind of yeah cheesy's cool yeah okay so we've got three number four would be interactive yeah yeah and that basically is taking it away from the stage space and going into the crowd yeah. which i guess you could argue the dj sax piece does definitely. do yeah mm -hmm. Um, and then a fifth one that is a really good question you are testing my knowledge <laughs> um, we got him <laughs> almost alternative and I'll tell you why yeah. because you can get we try to take vocal like a, maybe a Drake vocal and turn it into some form of acoustic that kind of twisted element makes yeah. it a fusion of different things so Alternative fusion would be another one where it's a little bit kind out of there. out there yeah, and I've very done one different. With a, they only do nineties um, covers, yeah, and like they wear t-shirts with Tetris on. Exactly like, that, cool. but it's so niche. And yeah. if you get somebody that loves it, you're not going you're anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah. that is a thing, um, but it it probably picks up on a specific style of music. Yeah. Maybe does things in a little bit of a different way. So it maybe picks up 90s vocals yeah. and makes a thing of that. that. Um, but just does it in a completely different way. Yeah, I like that. I think five is a good, I feel like that then narrows people down. Yeah. Because we've, we say this all the time, not every wedding is the same. Like this isn't even a sales thing of like using. No, it's not. If, they, if you're not right for that person, please don't book that stuff. Don't I copy the wedding. I could not agree anymore. Yeah. That the emotional side of a booking for a wedding when you are spending 
500 pounds, a thousand, doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. It just needs to be right based on what you want. You're literally representing the couple. Yeah. Like, it's not about the our brand. Our brand maybe gives people inspiration. Yeah. And people go, oh, but actually the booking process isn't about that at all. Mm. It's about people really thinking about what they want, not yeah. necessarily about what their guests want. Yeah. It's about what they... Because I think people think there is a, a high-end band yes. and then there's just the they lower end and yeah. they're just trying to work towards to be, like, as a wedding band, I feel like they just think there's the high-end and then there's one trying to be that Yeah. Band. I actually don't, I'm yeah. not sure, entirely sure that's the case. No. I think there is a home for everybody. The challenge is how you emotionally connect with the right couple. People, yeah. And find them. So Absolutely. That was the secondary That's question. a really interesting thing. So they so they're listening. They now know which one they're in. Yep. Where the fuck do you go now? What do you do? That's what do you really type good in? Quick. Do you Google it? Do you speak to people? Do you go, oh, I saw that band at a wedding, they were all right. I actually don't know the I answer know. entirely to that. And I'll tell you why. We I think we've been a little bit fortunate. The experiences that we deliver, I think people remember. Yeah. Because I was going to say, it's like, do you put a lot into like your Google Google SEO for people to find you? We never have. And I feel like that's mm. where We've people never... don't, that's how people can't find different bands. This is why everybody ends up on the place that I'm not going to say. Yes. Because it's, it's, the, it's there. Like if you're not like us and within the wedding industry, yeah. how the hell do you know where to go? I couldn't agree more. And I think we have done it off rep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and ultimately, if you just look at the weddings that I've done, we give people a part of our soul yeah. in that three hour period and people go away and, th and they take that with them Mem for a yeah. lifetime. Yeah, I don't know how you're alive after the set you do. I don't know, I'm still alive. <laughs> I don't know how I'm alive 10 I'm years like, later. Oh, I feel tired for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I think... So what would your advice be? I think, I mean, it's difficult with... Instagram and bit. Do you know what I said to you girls earlier? I think what you've done, and I'm not saying it because I'm on the podcast. Uh, we but paid, we paid think, him to say it. Listening to genuine people with opinions that you've, with experience, you've had real world experience, and listening to opinions of people, yeah, and listening to as much as you can, and engaging with podcasts like the Unfiltered Bride. I think is really important because otherwise you are in the thick of Instagram searches, yeah. Google searches. I have no idea what comes up at the top of and what somebody's paid to put you there. This is the problem. I There's a no payment idea. behind the adverts of things. <sighs> yeah, do you, it doesn't necessarily of, mean they're the best because they no. paid the most on And Google. I guess supply. I guess maybe what we can help people with is that they can get supplier recommendations, but the bit we're now teaching them is here's five different types of band. Speak to the band and say. Yeah. How do you, what are you? Where do you give them the, if I said to you and had made up these five that we've just made up, you would know which one you are. Absolutely. You would say, I'm what absolutely think, not. What one do you think they are? They're, the, so the noir band would yep. be, I've forgotten all the ones. We, they're the, the, the sleek, sleek ones. Sleek. The sleek yeah, one. yeah, yeah. And then your, I don't, I would put you in that kind of alternative one a little bit when you want to do the IB3 kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I would also put you in. Interactive. Interactive. Yeah. So, but I, but I, my favorite thing about Noir was that they weren't interactive with me. And it's emotion yeah. that, by that nature, then, you have one thought. I'm watching them. And you have another thought. Yeah. And that's the point. It's so personal. It's interesting how, honestly, I think what, if you can, if a couple can speak to companies where there is that genuine interest in you, yeah. I think they're, in, whether it's 615 or somebody in law, whoever, I think you'll generally be in the right place because I think those yeah. people will turn around and say, we're not right, this isn't right, yeah. but this is the person that you should go and speak 100%. to. And if you can get that, that transparency piece from the people that you're speaking to, that should be a good indication. 100%. And that only comes back to you anyway because they recommend then in other mates that are getting married, they're like, oh yeah, 100%. no, well, we didn't go with these guys because it's not our style. And that recommendation piece is actually a difficult thing to do yeah. because if 615 was going to recommend somebody i would hate it if we recommended and somebody said who have you sent like <laughs> so welcome you, to our world <laughs> yeah so when you said before about customer service anybody that comes in touch with 615 such service is a big factor yeah. and if it's not that that could to be in 
particular about who you're going to recommend yeah. is also important. Mm-hmm. What's what's a red flag for couples that are looking at entertainment and music? What would you say if this person said this? I don't want it. I'm not involved. If they, I think when they don't show any interest in going through the process that we, actually talking to yeah them. Okay. if they're just not interested in having the conversation we just want music we just want this we just want that and it's not they don't want to delve a little bit deeper and it they want it to be transactional but we're like we're not transactional yeah yeah, yeah. um that probably it's isn't the, the right one. fit yeah for us and and you know if they probably want let's t- there's a lot of wedding djs that do great work but they're a very different offering to what we are and if yeah. as they're talking they're probably showing signs that that's more suited that's probably another uh, yeah. where we turn around and go listen we We're can not- make recommendations yeah, yeah, here yeah. and here but by what you're talking about save this could yourself be the- some money get down there yeah <laughs> go to the cheaper dj and that's that's also <laughs> Go on, no, I know what she's... I'm going to let her interrupt us because she's got a good question. <laughs> Is it the only thing I'm going to ask? Yeah, I know what you're going to ask. Um, have your DJs ever picked up a microphone and said, onto the dance floor, please, onto the dance floor, no. please. <laughs> Keep it moving. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's my red flag. Absolutely That's my red flag. <laughs> not. The only time is first dance and last order. Do you say it in like it. a cooler way? Because I feel like every, some DJs are like, Eyes on the prize. Slide, right? no, we, don't do, we don't do any of those cheesy <laughs> lines. Those cheesy lines are not a thing. I feel like that should be the first question when somebody says they want a DJ. You go, cool. Do you want us to make announcements? Announcements. And if they go, yeah, I go okay, bye. Beep. No, <laughs> it's not do us. It. No, thank you. I do. But again, each to their own. Some people are like, oh yeah, no, I like Some it. Some people cool. love that. It's like, fine. And you, you, listen, there's that many weddings taking place all the time. Finding the right fit for so important that is so important yeah that's that's i just don't think people grasp the the power that they have as a couple massive power. the amount of stuff that they can say there are so many options only book what it, it makes a thousand percent sense for you fuck everybody else it doesn't matter if your mum wouldn't have that dj that's okay that's fine completely fine it's your day yeah so i have an important question for you go on this is when she does that it means it's not <laughs> are you married that's oh, important. That is. i'm not married why not no i feel like there was a butt coming Wait. oh sorry oh no i feel like i've jumped the gun have oh. you been married no no you've never no. been married no. i'm not married why not why not i will be <laughs> are you engaged no, not no. Yet. Have you got a partner? Yeah. What? Oh. <laughs> Why are you acting yes. shady? I'm not acting shady. He's just trying to play the She's watching like, this. I'm just playing it cool. Watching this like. I'm just playing it cool. What would your wedding be like? Explain your wedding. Who because would you have at your wedding? We. Would you be- play at your wedding? Sorry. No, Carry I on. wouldn't. But my would- business partner did. Did what? Play at his, at wedding. his wedding. Played at his wedding. Oh, I saw his wedding online. Yeah, Tom played at his wedding. It went down really well. Um, but no, I, we. Because I work in it, yeah. we always said we'd do a wedding abroad. Boring. Yeah. Small Why numbers. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but you've spent a lot of time abroad, haven't you? Yeah, small numbers, but probably make it just about the party, not necessarily all the formalities and make a few days of it. Okay. Um, with would a small you do the whole number ceremony of... and... No. Yeah, I think yeah. we would. Yeah. I, think I think we'd do some formalities. Um, but yeah, we do a few, but we'd definitely be abroad, smaller numbers, intimate, over a number of days, yeah. and curate theme each. The, yeah, you guys are going to hate the word theme, but theme each event. Yeah, as curate a different each kind of, experience yeah. and 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 I take it on a journey. The word I know, I know. Theme, curate. <laughs> curate. You say curate, curate. A theme. It's a <laughs> um, but yeah, we we'd do something like that and and go somewhere that was quite personal. Tours. I think that's how we Cute. do it. Can we come though? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, you're not cool. You need to get cool. I am cool. cool. <laughs> oh, I think I am. That's the whole point. If you think you're cool, you're I'm definitely not. not cool. So one of my other things, I feel like I've got a long list of things I love about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other things I love is the production behind yep. what you do. And again, it's all about, like you said, the show. Yeah. Why do you think people don't think about production? Do you do production at every booking you have? Is it like mandatory to have something? 
We do. Mm -hmm. The reason why people don't think about it is because it's bloody boring. And I'll tell you why. Mm. A light is a light. Yeah. A speaker is a speaker. We think about what happens with it and that's the difference. So when you look at, we work on factoring an element and production into every booking so that we know it's delivered in the way that the client wants it delivered, which yeah. is that ultimate experience. So it sounds great. It looks great. Yes, it can be customized and there are different levels. levels of, of there production, are different yeah. levels, but at the minimum, the entertainment concept booking will be booked with a minimum level of production. That makes me so, so that happy. I just so feel happy. like I think a lot of couples assume that the production that is included in most wedding bands and DJ is part of it. And actually the weddings you see on Instagram and stuff, there's a whole different team. It's, I mean, you're lucky that you do them both together, but yeah. I think there is an assumption that entertainment brings that with yeah. them and it's not true. And there are, there are operators that do that. Yeah. But when you start to delve into how you deliver these concepts in a really slick way, yeah. which is what you, you, you mentioned earlier, we need a production team because our knowledge in certain things is just not yeah. that. Like knowledge our, is the bit as well. Our time is music, creative. How do we make that show pop? That's what we're bringing to the table. Yeah. Then our internal production teams are how do we support that show? Yeah. From a technical perspective to make it pop. Because couples, I think also, and I, I don't either. I know you're probably a bit more knowledgeable than me. I don't. I don't understand it. If you're just telling point. me, if you tell me speakers, you you, I'm like, okay. Yeah, you don't need I, to. I think that's part of trusting yeah. who you book. So the wedding I did at the back end of last year, we had a lot of production. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, no, we're not too bothered. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to show you it with and without. Yeah. And he was like, I want it. But he was a bit more like, that's cool. <laughs> I, li it's I like that. Right. It's definitely a guy thing. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's definitely a guy thing because when... I just think technical mm. gadgets and that, which effectively all of it is yeah. to yeah, a point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guys tend to get it. Yeah. What I think females link with is the way it makes you feel yeah. when you are in that space. So when you are in the middle of the dance floor and it feels like a moment, yeah, that's what they buy into. And we say with those moments that, you have, those, to, you have to stage them. those moments essentially because the feelings don't just come. And I think people think they're like, oh, it's gonna, the feeling's gonna be there. In some sense, you have to stage it. It has yeah. to be set, set up, up for that moment, moment. We always to stage happen. it. Yeah. Yeah. I know that there's certain tracks that play before we go on that get certain reactions on the dance floor. There's yeah. certain things that we do within our sets that certain things happen. That's you put the moment there. If they take it, they take it. If they don't, fine, cool. But, but it's, the it's, moment, the opportunity be, yeah, is there. But it's giving you, we do it where it's giving ourselves 99.9% .9 probability that it will every yeah. single time. And yeah. that, that is an experience thing. Yeah. Um, it, hit, it just hits. I like the hit. Just hits. What would be, so couples again, potentially they're looking at bands, they're doing other things. What are the minimum requirements that they need to either be asking their band about for production production wise yeah. or sourcing themselves what would you say is like to get Always that wedding looking good some sim some simple but effective lighting so if yeah. you think some simple moving heads can be really really effective you need to dumb this down yeah i was gonna say i think I, even i got moving heads though they're lights yeah and move. they're attached <laughs> to those big they look like speakers almost they're they on look like speakers like stands. So, they, they, so imagine some form of metal structure and these little blobs that are sort of stuck onto them. Yeah. They provide atmospheric lighting for a room. Otherwise, you're in a room and there's nothing there. You... So these are literally balls of colour moving around the room? Yeah. Okay. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've done this so you, you know, you know uplighters? I do know what an uplighter is. You know what an uplighter is. But for anyone that doesn't, yeah. light on the floor points, points up, up usually at the wall. Yeah. They're behind us now if people are watching. There's up yeah. lit pink and it does set a... Sets a mood. Sexy. Like this sets a mood. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Pink. Okay. What yeah. mood are you feeling? Yeah, what so are you again, feeling? What, what mood are you feeling? I'm just feeling sexy. quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, why I think I'm cool because I got a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but consider the lighting. 
Okay, so so bare minimum, they're going to want the lighting. They're going to want some up lighters and some moving heads. Just some move, movement. in simple terms, some movement. Movement of light. Movement lighting. And I'm just going to add in, because I work at a lot of marquees, we've got to be able to dim those lights. Yeah, absolutely. Because bright can, is the... Yeah, you want them to be able to dim down. Yeah. So always ask the question about who does that yeah. on the day. Because what you don't want is it to expect it to happen... And, no one knows and it to, yeah. just doesn't happen. Do you yeah. always send a light in tech? Yeah. Yeah, so we will People think that have... is wild, don't they? Like some people are like, I need someone to control it's the most the light. important and thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. is it? Is, if yeah, you could I'll... only take one bit of production, would it be lighting? I... Well, you need sound. You need a combination <laughs> oh, you of both. Sound. <laughs> but if budget wise, you can stretch to have a tech, a, a technical guy yeah. that controls it all, or girl, or girl, or girl. <laughs> on the night, it's the best money you will ever spend. I'll mm. give you an example. I did a gig in France, outdoor, because it was a beautiful outdoor space. The production company were French. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no guy looking after it. They did the speeches oh, and all the music, the speakers went off. So the guy couldn't, mm -hmm. uh, uh. couldn't hear anything. Nobody could hear anything. <laughs> But because the production company had plugged it into the kitchen, the water had yeah. shorted the fuse no. and everything went off. We've managed to fix it. Yeah. But let me tell you, in it's the immediate, it was the most stressful thing on the planet. So it's something that you can't see, but things like that so are it's, really important. It's an insurance thing. It's an insurance. It is an insurance. Because I've done weddings, not to that scale, but as in the, the speeches, we're literally mid-speech, the microphone's gone. Gone. I'm then looking at the venue like, oh my God, help me. And I just a little tip for anybody listening, if that happens, just keep talking without the microphone. Just keep talking. Because they stood and waited and I was like, keep talking. Yeah. We'll sort this out for maybe the next speech. Well, it happened um, when I went to, we went to the national wedding show, didn't we? Oh, yes. And we did a talk. Yeah. And my yeah. mic went down. And then so, he looked at me and panicked and we just shared our mic in between I us. I carried we on, like, you then to pass it on. And then by the time we were doing that, they fixed that one and brought, brought it over. Back. So it, yeah. it is like, just keep it going. But if that's then it for the night, what, what are you doing? And it's levels. <laughs> like production, again, it's not something that a bride and groom necessarily understand. Yeah. But when you, it will, it, whether it's small or big, yeah, it will change the dynamic of the feel. It's certainly for the, the party piece. Yeah. It will change yeah. how that room feels, and lighting actually goes a long way uh, totally to agree. changing the look of yeah. the room. You can, you, when it, when it goes dark, dark outside, and some simple up lights in a space can just change the way it looks. Yeah. So, so all of a sudden, you've got a daytime space that's very kind of romantic and romantic, cool, and, yeah, yeah. and the evening, the same space looks totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think lighting's really important, whether it's just some really simple stuff, or yeah. you go, you know, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Yeah. But some lighting. simple lighting. Teach us about sound. Sound, like we... Like dumb, dumb, dumb. Right. <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> so there's acoustic. Acoustic is no, no kind of speaker. It's just singing out loud and you might be playing an instrument, and, but like that's that. So there's no there's no speakers for no things speakers like that. Okay, take us from that right through to... What's a subwoofer? That's just the a first thing. A subwoofer is like people the, have them in their cars. So you know when you know when you feel like bass. Yes. When you're like, when I can feel that's it in my what stomach. gives you the bass. Like when you feel it in your stomach, yeah. that's what gives the bass. Okay. So that's quite technical, you know. A subwoofer is quite technical. She used to go out of boy races. That's probably. What oh really? I'm, never, I'm looking at Brian. Brian, I guess Brian. Did you have a subwoofer? Did, yeah. did you Brian have like a diamond earring? He did have a diamond. Like... It's because you used to beatbox, so I feel like that would be within that. But that's my that is my extent of no, knowledge of speakers. So give okay. us the basics. You want it to sound great. I would always say if you can work with a professional. Yeah. Because they you are paying for the knowledge of what somebody recommends. Yeah. Um, but if you are in a big hall, that's a really difficult space to get acoustically right. So yeah. you maybe have some speakers at the front and then dot some speakers around the space so that you can hear it all the way through. Yeah. Um, so I think try and speak to an expert if you can, yeah. if your budget allows. If it doesn't, just make sure that the outfit or the entertainment provider are factoring in some form of speaker yeah. system is there a question you can ask 
again, I'm looking for red flags when I'm speaking to, we're on about this part where we're trying to get to know the supplier that we want to book. Yeah. Is there something you should be asking that then you can understand that they know what they're talking about? Do they set up their own equipment? Yeah. Do they bring it themselves and will they pack it down? Those are the three things that you need to be asking anybody. Yeah. Will they set it up? Will they provide it, provide it and yeah. look after and monitor it for the duration of the event? The word. Yeah. Monitor for the duration of the event. Ask them questions about things. What happens if there's a if the speaker goes off? Have we got a spare? Do they carry a spare? Is it you know it's simple things like that? We're gonna get emails from bands going stop fucking telling people to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important. Yeah. Because my it, biggest one is in marquees. If I'm working in a marquee without a sound and lighting tech, I'm like, no, no. It's because there's a like generator. Like we've got generators, we've got power yeah, plants, yeah. we've got all of this. Yeah. And you need an expert. Like, I can ring the generator company. That's not a problem. Yeah. It's the stress that it creates in the immediate moment mm. when, as a planner or as a performer, something happens and it's like, who's responsible? Everyone, everyone looks around like this. Like, and this is why it's fuck, my worst fuck, night. Fuck. So I'm quite often there on the day, uh, throughout the day. If the power goes, they look at me and I'm like, oh, I, no I was going to bring my dad because he used to be an electrician. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's <laughs> my, yeah. But I need to be able to say to a tech, that's you, bro. Step yeah. in. If, if you can, if the budget allows, I would always recommend having an expert professional. Yeah dealing with production. So if they say to you, you can add a sound tech or not, we're saying I would yes, always please. say yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about special effects? I think they're great. So lighting must, yeah. sound must. Yeah. We're now on to this special effects, which is nice to have. Does it fit in that? I yeah. think it's a must. Of course you <laughs> do. You think it's a must because it's sparkly and you love it. So what uh, fits into special effects? I think it's a must. It creates that feeling. It does. I couldn't it agree does. more. It it's does. those moments. And if you think like, about what we're in this game for, Moments. That is what we're yeah. trying to create, mm. moments. And I think people are like, oh no, it's a waste of money. My guests won't like appreciate, appreciate it. it. They will. They're the bits they're going to go and be like, do you know what? That was insane. Rank agree. the special effects for us. Yeah. What's, if, so I've got a bit of budget. I want your top to least important special effects. I would say, um, I forgot the, the sparklers. Cold number, sparks. Cold, yeah, the yeah. sparklers, number one. They are Epic. something that's really quite cost effective. Yeah. They can go in, the DJ can trigger them at the push of a button. So you do it with maybe a specific track. Yeah. So if it, it, a certain part of the track where First you dance, want- First like- Yeah. Yeah. You know, we- My favorite part, they told us to put our hands in it constantly, didn't they? Yeah, they're like, it's called for your hand a bit. Like, oh, like, try it, well, try it. Well, I saw it go and there was a, a girl with a veil and I was like, ah, and I was like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do anything. So sparklers, what do you call them? Cold, Cold sparks. sparks. Cold sparks, well, same thing. Yeah. Same thing, okay. same thing. Um, dry ice. Yeah. Is that second on the list? Then? Yeah, second yeah. on the list. I don't know where we're gonna go after this number two. But dry <laughs> out yeah, dry house is a good one. For first dances. It, so this is the mist that comes at the bottom yeah, of the Yeah, so floor. it just ha sits over your ankles yeah. and creates like a cloud effect. Yeah. Oh, that gives me For a picture. Yeah. It looks I'm really a haze cool. Girl. Oh, so ha is haze, haze is third? Haze is, I'm haze. a haze girl. So what's For the, the difference evening? between dry ice and haze? So dry ice is low. Yeah. You can, it's like a cloud. Yeah. Haze just is everywhere. Haze is fog machine. Yeah. It, okay. Let's not. So I'm dumbing it down. Do, do not. I'm dumbing it down. Freaking insult me when I've got my. Do you call it a fog machine? Listening. listening. Haze. Well, yeah. Well, what does it sound like? Box. <laughs> my when clients the box are listening delivered. and like Beth, you've made me book a fog machine. <laughs> All right, you know where you spend all that money on a fog machine. <laughs> Here's a fog machine though, isn't it? Haze is perfect for like pin lights. It for you, lighting. It gives you the yeah, lines. It gives you the lines. Because mm. it, yeah, it, so. Yeah. And for me, it, it's all about look. Of course it is. <laughs> so from one to three, cold, cold sparks, sparks. Yeah. Dry ice. Yeah. Haze. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. no, but we've also forgot oh, about the CO2. CO2. Oh, CO2 I'd put that is a above good one, haze you know. if you like that though. Like, no, see, I'd put haze above CO2. Would you? Yeah, because I mean, I like the CO2. See, I put some CO2 point... at number one. Yeah, would, would you? <laughs> yeah, but you're yeah, my major boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm the I'm the not cool one. Where I'm like, I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> you really got knocked out by. <laughs> that is the ultimate special effect. Yeah. In my opinion. CO2. You realise cool. your opinion. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, but it's more it's more suited to like a club environment. I was going to say, explain CO2 to people before it's they start booking it. These two massive cannons. 
that probably sit over a DJ booth that's blast air at you. Air at like really <laughs> quick. But why? It's fun, isn't it? It's why? Just a fun Explain thing. the fun to, about how, to me. How do you feel about people doing CO2 guns? Oh, not really. I've, I've, I've seen it a couple of mm. times. Isn't that it's where not, you shoot a t-shirt from? You can. Yeah, it's the same thing. They do it like behind you? the booth, but I'm just like, it's just not the right time. It's not the mo. You know, the moments. If you do it, you've just got to get it at the right time. Yeah. I just don't know if I get the CO2. It was fun though. I'm not gonna lie. It was fun watching. Why don't people. you like it? I just I would pick all of the others above CO2 personally. You don't just see in, it. You stood right in front of it. I didn't got, know it was going off. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was like this. And I was like, oh god. I don't know what is happening. There's an aeroplane in the like, air. Program, Angus Thong's in perfect snogging. You're like that girl that just gets like knocked out at everything. No, I did enjoy it when it was happening. I just didn't. Uh, I don't know if it. But again, it's so nice to talk to someone about it, understand what it is, and then make my opinion on it. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't want CO2 at my wedding. I want the cold. What sparks. we established there is we different. all have different yeah. priorities, mm. and it's just. And isn't it nice? Is yeah. it nice that all the weddings would be but different? But that is what makes them different. Yeah. And like I said, you know, going through a process with a professional, whether it's a planner, an entertainment yeah. curator, or whatever that is, that's gonna take you through that journey, will, should ensure that you get the right outcome. Oh, I love it, I love, love it. Love it. This wait, is, wait, 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 uh, no, what, you say. look cheeky. I know, I feel cheeky. <laughs> look cheeky. <laughs> Tell us some stories, give us some, What's the worst we thing you've ever been to? We want the we want the juice of like shit that goes wrong. Oh. Give us like the worst thing you've ever seen at a wedding. Or just some wild stories. Yeah. The you must worst you must see the thing. wildest of it. You're yeah, you get the good bits. The worst. I'm gonna have a think about this for a second. <laughs> this is a good one. So this is a really random thing. You might have you ever been to Bongo's Bingo? Yeah. Yes. I did a wedding that booked Bongo's Bingo. Great, love that. Did it work? Have you seen the prizes? Yeah. Yeah. I almost won an air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> when people win these prizes at a wedding, they feature all night. So one of the prizes was a helmet. Yeah. A, 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 you know, like a Vespa yeah, yeah, yeah. motorcycle yeah. helmet. The guy wore it all, all night. <laughs> one of the prizes was a, a horse. <laughs> Have you seen like the, those... It was like a horse that was that people actually honestly. Oh, and you bounce up and down. Like yeah, it and yeah. it was on the dance floor <laughs> oh all night. I really want to see the pictures from this wedding. I haven't got any pictures. <laughs> it's all in here. Um, That's so funny. Yeah, there Get was some the dance floor a Henry Hoover. <laughs> Honestly. Shit, the budget that went into that then. Yeah. Honestly, the prizes. mental. Oh, that, I love that. The I prizes that. were a consistent feature on the dance floor. I love that. And I've Get never seen anything sticks. like it. Get rid of all of the sunglasses. Fuck the CO2 Henry, Henry. Hoover. <laughs> cycle helmet, you name it. How fun. Do you ever get, do you ever have to get involved at the end when people are drunk and stupid and there's fights and there's crying yeah, bridesmaids and there's... Them. Do you ignore them? Do you just yeah, let them get on with it? Want to get involved? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever leave like people lying there sleeping like at the venues and you're just like, see you later? I've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that before. <laughs> are you high maintenance? With in like what way? He's literally just smiling at <laughs> the audience. Or like what you need as a bride. Oh no, no. As a, we. I, I disagree. We, want... we got the list that was as long as my arm. Was it? Was it? You're joking. Mm. Not for. You. Was it Noir? Was it the band? Was it Noir? Noir. Noir. Sound like they've got a Noir, rider. Noir, yeah. Was it Noir? No, it wasn't even bad at all. They were so chill. Okay, good. No, they well, literally, no, they literally we... asked for food. And yeah. he was like, please can I have some chips. I was like, okay, yeah. that's what we do. So we. From experience, we have come from club world. We do a lot of private mm. events, all sorts of things. I've seen it when artists can be really particular. I just think yeah. it's an off put. Yeah, I As agree. a brand, we keep it real. Yeah. Yes, people pay for the crit, but we keep it real. We're not, we don't charge people for silly riders and bits and pieces. At the end of the like, we you just go want to... a bit of food, somewhere yeah. to be, get changed, drinks? No, do you waters. Do you drink alcohol on a wedding no. day? Do you not? No. Is that like a rule across what you do or is not it some always. do? Not like, always, I have had a beer. On oh, a beer. you not a beer. <laughs> Push the boat. Um, but generally speaking, no, we keep it. Chill. Is, Why yeah. is that? I think more a professional I agree. point I agree. of view. I think yeah. we have definitely had it. When we first started the company, there was a couple of things that we, as young 
<laughs> thought was fine and then <laughs> it just wasn't fine. Yeah. Uh, so you learn quite quickly from certain things, but you've got to go through that yeah. to know mm-hmm. that it, one, one of the things that I mm-hmm. did was talk, I, mean, I took a friend of mine as a, like when I first started doing <laughs> weddings, I would never take anybody to a gig ever. But there was one time, this is 10 years ago. Yeah. I we won't somebody, judge you, don't worry. Yeah, I took somebody with me thinking, oh, I'll be fine, don't worry about it. They knew and hated her. Oh. Yeah. Wait, you I, took a girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Daniel. Honey. No. Yeah. Daniel I, was trying to <laughs> yeah, her Come I, watch this, babe, I play sax. <laughs> I, <laughs> but that backfights, so it's things like that. You learn. And you learn very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since that, that was like 10 years ago. Yeah. Did that last, the thing with the girl? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> she was like, <laughs> Not at all. But yeah, you know, alcohol, like, is just a no go. Yeah. It can send, I, it can turn, go somewhere that it doesn't yeah, need yeah, to go. Yeah. So we just like, just don't and do again, it. And again, like, I've paid you to be there. I, it's I don't about want being professional. You, yeah. What somebody thinks is. A couple is, of beers is different. Like, listen, one or two. What somebody thinks is acceptable somebody else will not think is yeah. acceptable and there will be a bride and groom in there that doesn't think anything of it but let me tell you there'll also be the people that think well what, what are, are you doing, doing? Yeah, yeah, drinking yeah. at my wedding yeah yeah, yeah for yeah. sure that's a thing yeah so we just shut it we just don't, just don't do it like good. That, I like that. Yeah, just I would don't never do it. drink. Why, why do, you don't want to open yourself up to No, I also get drunk from one drink, so that wouldn't be great. I have another question. Go on then. Sorry, Brian. I'm also a big lightweight. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I'll have one, and they're like, oh, have a Prosecco with us in the morning. And I'm like, mate, if you want me to finish your wedding, I'm not drinking anything. Yeah, big, <laughs> Get me big water. lightweight. So one of your biggest things is like the energy you bring. Yeah. When did that start, and why did it start, and does everybody... So if they don't have you, yeah. so if they don't have Dax, and you have someone else playing the sax, do they get that? To a point, but we very much probably sit within me and... Yeah. Because you do tears, don't you? Yeah. So you've got... For ev- like it's a very point. much a me thing. Yeah. Uh, b- probably because it's quite difficult to play whilst doing Yeah, I get yeah. out of breath. Yeah. Jesus. And also, you'll never find someone with the same passion It's a very have. personal thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, does that mean we can't work with great artists and different people? Mm. I don't... We definitely don't want to create morphs of that's my usp yeah Yeah. and for some people that's also they don't want that either like when we're talking about profiling with Mm. clients like if you want the ultimate energy you won't find it anywhere else but it's not for everybody it's not for everybody because it's a lot yeah you saw it yeah, yeah. It's a lot. I was t- honestly tired watching you. I was yeah. like, you're... Um, <laughs> where did it start? <laughs> we used to work... I don't know if you know it, actually. Do you remember a venue called Neighbourhood? Yeah. In Manchester? Mm-hmm. You're not... pretending to be cool. No, you're not cool. I know I'm not cool. You... I don't know what Neighbourhood the, is. Your problem is... No <laughs> I shade, have no problem. No shade at all. You had a child very young. I did. So you didn't, like... I might have taken it to Neighbourhood. So you went? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you remember in the middle of that space, there was a big central stage above, right in the middle of the room. I was. You were probably very drunk. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Manchester is always a good night out. (laughs) Yeah, but it needed energy Mm. and it needed, and it kind of came from there. I was in front of a lot of people, I was very young, new to doing it at the time. What did you do? Just be like, I'm gonna do it. Just kind of, but I always felt like I wanted to be center of attention when I do it. So there is an alter ego that ah, flicks in, bang, before I play. This, I'll be honest, this is not what I was expecting. Like, yeah. from seeing you there. There is a different person. I was like, how are we going to keep this convers? Like, I yeah. don't even know how to explain it. How what are we going to keep this? What you think he was going to be doing? Jumping no, I around. thought, yeah. Well, no, but I just, I didn't. on his channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I didn't, I didn't see. <laughs> I don't know how to word this without sounding like I'm being rude about either alter ego, but there's a there's, a there's an intelligence person. and a thing here that holds a conversation versus the fucking nuts man yeah. on the, the night. And who... that comes in. I have to say, I have to yeah. five minutes before that performance, it literally goes click. Yeah, and it, you've got to send yourself to that place to do. Yeah, that because the conversations we this. had on the night were like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" 
yeah, 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 cool. Yeah. See you later, cool, nice to meet you, bye. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, but we were saying that earlier though, that we have, we switch on when we need to yeah. switch. Like you were saying about yeah, yeah. a job you've got and you'd like, you'd switch on like that. Yeah. But that's a professionalism thing. Yeah, yeah I agree. and you have to put, you, but you change for different. Like we change for different clients. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And you and have like to you do said, that. You know what you can get away, not get away with, but I know how I can act with some clients. I know how much your alcohol one is probably my level of swearing. Yeah, I know the ones that are expecting me to swear and have banter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other ones that aren't. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. And that's, that's fine. Either. You tell me More what you want. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> but it, like that was, I knew I needed to deliver something in that venue. All those years back, it had to be. Energy, energy. It was the busiest venue in Manchester at the time. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be there. And it just kind of How developed. did you feel after? Great. Buzzing. Buzzing. Yeah. And you laugh. And I again. always, and I still do, <laughs> even after now, I still feel the I, same I am picturing <laughs> you coming off that stage in the back and the manager going, thank you, Daniel. And you going, it's Dax. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. There's Daniel and there's Dax. <laughs> Yeah. The CO2 cannon, boom. Yeah, bang. <laughs> but I think we went over it quickly, though, that you have the tiers, don't you? So 6.15 yeah. have different levels of the perform like performers, essentially. So yeah, how and much people, energy and like... And I think people are paying for maybe experience yeah. Yeah. and all those different things. And there's there are different levels of experience. Mm -hmm. And that is just... And that reflects in the price. And yeah. that reflects in the price. But at um, 6.15, you still get the process. You still get yeah. the booking The customer process. service is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's certain... As a premium brand, there's certain brand values that are really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the customer service piece doesn't matter almost where we end, but if you've got a passion for music and you want to do that, care yeah. about that journey on the day musically, that's what that yeah. process is. Because I do is think if you for. have bad customer service, it doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah, because I'm pissed off. So I literally, I don't, like, are you going to turn up on the day? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Completely switched off. Yeah. Won't go back. Yeah, yeah. And would tell And I wouldn't tell million, anyone else. Yeah, but you'd also tell yeah. people how bad it was. Yeah, I agree. Completely. People will quicker talk about how bad you've been than Big how time. good you've been. Mm. Um, I would like to end on a final question. Okay. If you can give couples, like, one piece of advice yep. for their entire wedding planning process, what would you tell them? Focus on one or two priorities, deliver them really well, and then think about all the other areas after. So focus on one or two things that mean a lot to you, whether it's a venue, whether it's entertainment, whether it's whatever, you know, you'll deliver those things that mean a lot to you really well. And even, if it, means, it, even if it means you don't have budget for the other things and you do without, but do what you wanna do really well instead of spreading yourself too thin i love that i'm glad that that fits in with the ethos of this yeah. <laughs> imagine you like spread yourself really thinly uh yeah. copy everyone in you see <laughs> you do you yeah um dax thank you so much yeah, for coming no, on thank you can you just tell people where they can follow you where they can find you and how to see everything that you're doing yeah so you can follow 615 at 615 underscore on instagram which Tabs is into six, six letters like s-i-x six, yeah. one five <laughs> underscore um, tabs on Facebook, Google, um, and you can find us on there. Amazing. Thank you so Thank much you for coming. Thank you so much. much.